Greetings, I am Mr. Sean. This is my channel, and this is Love at First Sight, visual novel. And wow, um, <laughs> uh, we're trying to begin. Uh, having a good time with our little girlfriend, one eye Cyclops. Getting feelsy, handsy with her scars on her head while she's, you know, just holding tight to her chest. This ain't awkward. In the middle of an alleyway where anyone, anyone in the right mind would be like, What are you doing? <laughs> so, it's, <laughs> it's, just, it's just so weird. So, let's get back to it. This is, and again, she seems to have lost all her strength. All but collapsing onto my, into my arms. I start stroking the wound once more, and after a little while, she begins to shudder whenever my fingers, fingers make contact with her skin. She is so cute. I'm just touching her wound, but starting to feel like I'm doing much more than that to her. Yeah. Sachi, huddled in my arms as she is, become, seems so drained. It's like she doesn't even have enough strength to stand up anymore, and I'm, only, I'm the only thing supporting her. Probably a good time to stop that. Thanks uh, for doing for that. I think I'm satisfied. Oh, that's not that's not Sachi. <clears throat> Thanks uh, for that. I think I'm satisfied. I do say she looks a lot better now without her bandages on her head. Looks a little looks, looks much nicer, more natural, <laughs> more normal. Yeah, right. Really, I don't know. I might might have done that if we hadn't stopped. I don't know what I might have done if we hadn't stopped. What were we going to do? I wanted to stay like that so badly. <laughs> her press, well, her pressed against me with my arms wrapped around her. But I had to end it. Now that, yeah. That would be nice having her up around, arms wrapped around her. Totally understand. Totally understand. I thought I'd talk about the a whole uh, massaging of her wounds there. But you want to continue that. Oh, okay. Sachi seems reluctant to separate from me, and she stares up at me longingly. For several moments, neither of us can tear ourselves away from each other's gaze, but I force myself to break away. I gather our bags up off the floor and hand Sachi's over to her. Here you go. Oh, thank you. We exit the narrow alleyway with Sachi's bandages in tow and start heading home again. Uh, Senpai? Yeah. Did you, uh like it oh yeah I did thanks I what else could you, what else could you say to that you can touch it anytime you want senpai Sachi no back off a little bit just roll that back a little bit sure I feel like I might lose my mind if this sort of thing keeps happening I can't ask her to let me do that again the two of us walk in silence, unsure what to say to each other. Please, comment below. What would you do? What would you talk about after that? What? Just what would you... What was your first comment? I keep glancing at Sachi out of my corner of my eye, and eventually I keep catch her doing the same to me. When our, great, when our gazes meet, we both remain silent, but Sachi smiles broadly. I can't help but return the smile, though I feel really embarrassed and quickly look straight ahead again. This silly incident repeats itself a few times before we finally arrive at the Sachi's house. Well, see you tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. Just about to separate away as the front door to Sachi's house opens and both turn toward it reflexively. Miyumi is standing there in the doorway, not looking at all surprised, and she walks briskly over to us. Welcome home, Sachi. Good afternoon, Mamoru-kun. Hello, um, Miyumi-san. I send her days. She spares me a glass before turning to Sachi. Sachi, I know you just got home, but I'd like you to do some shopping for me. Uh, y yes? I'll go change my clothes. No need. I prefer you if you do it right away. Here's a list with everything I need and some money. Just go to the convenience store. It should only take 10 minutes or so, I think. Oh, okay. S and see you tomorrow, senpai. Sachi, oblivious takes a note made me hand her and starts off almost running towards the convenience store. Me and me, son. That been the perfect opportunity for me to go with her to the convenience store and... 
What are you doing? <clears throat> what the hell? What's the point of having her do that? To talk to you. Mimi didn't look like she was in a hurry to get whatever it was she sent Sachi for. Come to think of it, why didn't she just at least wait until I had, was gone to send Sachi out? Um, I'll be going now. Sachi's gone shopping, so I don't have any reason to be here anyway. I guess I'll head home and... Wait a moment, if you would, Mamoru-kun, I'd like to talk to you. Huh? It's me. Well, now I can't leave. You can leave anytime you want, dude, really. Technically. It'd be rude, but you could. What could she possibly want to talk to me about, though? Yes, to you. Um, what for? Yesterday, Sachi came home looking like she had been crying her eye out. I'd like to know why, and I think he might be able to tell me. C crying? Sachi didn't tell you? Well, I heard quite a bit from her, you know. There's one thing I'd like to hear from you, though. Are you teasing her with all this? Having fun at her expense? What? No, I never do. Really? Yes, I swear. I see. Well, if that's the truth, I'm glad to hear it. But I do wonder, do you think you can take care of her? Well, yes, I do. What do you mean by that? I assume you know that Sachi and I do not have the best relationship. I think it might be irresponsible for me to ask this of you. But I'd like you to become someone she can rely on. Does that mean you're willing to let her rely on you? No, I was not applying that. It's just that I don't think she's willing to do so any longer. Sachi is... You're saying that she doesn't want to be around you? That she doesn't trust you? Yes, that is more or less what she has said. It's understandable, however... God dang, are all these people in her family just freaking super, not just introverts, super introverts. Like, they're all thinking, oh, wow. Has Sachi told you about her mother? Oh, has Sachi told you about her mother, my sister? Yes, a bit. The two of us were inseparable, as children. When she was on her deathbed, she begged me to take care of Sachi after she was gone. And so I adopted her child. Sachi said something like that as well. At the time, my line of thinking was that Sachi was the reason that my sister's husband had disappeared and that she had worked herself to death. None of that is Sachi's fault. In the back of my mind, I knew the girl was innocent. But I had just lost my beloved sister. I had no, time to, I had no one to blame but her. So I convinced myself that she was responsible. Great! I never told her that I blamed her, but I'm sure she knew it nonetheless. Actions greater than words sometimes. She soon began to keep her head down, even in the house. After that, there was no conversation between us beyond the bare minimum. I behaved like a child. I tried to involve her in my life as little as possible, and she did the same to me. She had just lost her mother, but I was too caught up in my own grief, too selfish to spare even one kind word for her. Thinking back, it was truly a shameful way to have behaved. But she's thinking about it. But once she got into high school, she started coming home with numerous cuts and bruises. It was then I realized I had neglected my beloved sister's final wish. I knew then that I had let her down. But if you realize that, why do you try to help her? I did try. I wanted to know what was happening to her, of course, but she only told me that she had fallen, and nothing had happened to her, and now it's too late for me to help her. But she changed, you know, after she met you. Me. Oh, come on, guy. Seriously. Yes, at first, I was cautious of you, thinking that you might be the one responsible for her injuries. I'm sorry that I was not more amiable the last time you met. Oh, yeah, no problem. I guess that's why she was so overbearing back then. She just seemed less uptight compared to last time. Her stare was so icy that then, totally different from now she is. Totally different from how she is now. <laughs> sorry. Although I suppose she was ready to accuse me of hurting Sachi from the moment she met me. Ever since that day, I saw... I first saw you in front of my, our house. That girl has been smiling more than ever before. She goes back to, to staring at the ground as soon as she notices me, of course. But still, when I gave her money on the day you two went out, she was the happiest I'd ever seen her. She even thanked me several times. I'd never seen her like that before, and it actually startled me. But her face at the time, delighted as she was, was nothing less than adorable. That was the first time she had ever asked some, something of me as well. It made me quite happy. And all of that is thanks to you. So you don't hate Sachi then, I take it. I do not. I thought I did it for a long time, however, and I'm paying for that now. 
If you're admitting all this to me now, why not tell it all to Sachi too? I'm not sure she's willing to listen, even if I tried. I'm the source of her many bitter sorrows for her, you know. I think she listened. She is grateful to you for taking care of her. She just doesn't want to cause you any trouble. She told me that herself. But I don't know how I could possibly connect with her after everything I've done. Miami looks away from me, Nick. Suddenly looking very troubled. She seems fixed on something and I follow her line of sight to the street corner to see Sachi walking toward us. Her head down once again. Looks like it's time to wrap this up. But Moroku, please keep everything to you I've told you a secret from Sachi. Sachi feels guilty about being a burden on Mayumi. Mayumi feels guilty about be how she treated Sachi. Both these issues have all but resolved themselves, haven't they? If that's the case, they would be talking to each other. That's the problem. <clears throat> Somehow, even though Sachi has changed, Mayumi's attitude toward her has not. Or at least, Mayumi hasn't let Sachi catch on that it has. And I think Mayumi wants to keep it that way for some reason. Now think about it, she must have sent Sachi shopping so she could talk to me alone. Durr. She made a list of things she didn't really need, just so she could send Sachi away to buy them. Was she just waiting by the door for us to get here? If that's the case, she must have been planning to talk to me from the very start. Mimi san. I think Sachi will tell you herself. But I was planning to take her out with some friends of mine this weekend. Oh my, are you? I shouldn't have anything to worry about if they're with your friends, right? Of course, I'll let her go. Thank you. When I talked about it with her, she said she wished she had some nicer clothing. She never asked you, of course. But, I see. Mimi san. Mahima-san, I got what you wanted, but, uh, hmm? Amaro-senpai, you're still here? Sachi hands the bag full of things she bought to Mayumi. I was just having a little chat with your friend, that's all, Sachi. I got some more shopping to do. Did, did I get everything you needed? Hmm? Oh, yes, thank you. There seem to be several items in the plastic bag. It looks like Mayumi had to buy a bag of candy, a few pens, that sort of thing. Kind of a strange shopping list. You could have at least tried to make it a little more sensible. I need you to come along, so go change out of your uniform. Huh? Okay. Where, where are we going? To buy you some clothes. I've got some other things to take care of as well. Now, if you'll excuse us, Mamoru-kun. Right. C clothes? For me? Why? Uh, er, see you tomorrow, mamoru senpai Yeah, see you. Hopefully, get a little bit of bonding experience for the two of them. The two of them hurry back into the house, leaving me alone. Time to go home. Maybe she's not quite as clever as I thought. Whatever. We cleared up with the misunderstanding between us, and she doesn't seem like a bad person, so it'll be fine. Probably. Hopefully, I mean... <laughs> seems like she's going out of her way to buy some clothes for her, so I can't imagine. Oh my. <laughs> Oh my gosh, they, they CG'd it. Wow. Oh, wow, that's adorable. <laughs> oh, jeez, Louise, are you kidding me? Oh, that was just adorable right there. Saturday morning, I ring Sachi's doorbell. Before long, I hear Sachi's footsteps before the door swings open. Wow. She loves orange. Wow. There's a few little changes going on here. Good morning, Maru Senpai. Good morning, Sachi. Are those clothes new? Yes. Um, what do you think? You look good. They look really cute on you. That's just not me being nice. They really do make her cute. Yes, they do. Uh, I'd say a little too many bows, though. You know, I got the pink bow, which is cute. The gold bow, well, the orange bow with the orange dress. Yeah, maybe a little much. I'll let it slide. <laughs> Not like I have any uh, choice in the matter anyway, but you know, I've never seen her dress up this way until now. It's a fresh look, to say the least. Yeah, absolutely. Along with her new clothes, she's wearing a bright smile that I'm sure the crying girl on the stairs never would have worn. The whole ensemble seems to make her sparkle. Very much so. Holy cow! Thank you. She looks a little embarrassed when she first appeared in the doorway, but after she heard what I thought of her, her face lit up. Good morning, Mamoru-kun. I was so mesmerized by Sachi that I didn't notice me. We step out of the house behind her, and her voice snaps me out of the daze with a jolt. Good morning. Take care of Sachi. Sachi, don't cause any trouble for Mamoroku. Right. 
Mimi's glaze is icy as ever, her tone is no friendlier than usual, and Sachi responds in the same panicked tone she always has when talking to her aunt. Have a good time, you two. Thank you. How have things been with your aunt lately? Lately? Well, she doesn't act any differently in the house. I guess I should have expected her to change her long-time habits overnight. But she did buy me some clothes. I thought she might want me to just get anything so we could go home, but she actually helped me pick these out. Step one. That's great. Or maybe she's just the type to express herself through her actions more than her through her attitude. I was a little worried, but I should have had more faith in her, it seems. I knew you must have had said something to her yesterday. You did, right? No, we were just standing around talking. That's a lie, of course, but maybe more or less begged me not to tell Asachi. They need to sell their differences on their own. Anyway, all I can do is watch. Oh, you were? But yeah, Aunt Miyumi didn't even tell me why she suddenly wanted to buy me clothes. Did you ask her? Yeah. Kind of. Ask her directly when you get the chance. Not just for this. You should be straightforward with her whenever you need something. If you ask her directly, I'm sure she'll answer you directly. Probably. I guess so. I'm sure she doesn't hate you. If she did, I doubt you'd have bought you some clothes. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I have to thank her again for that. By the way, are you sure you're fine with that without a hood? <laughs> yeah, as long as I'm with you, I don't care who sees me. You really think these clothes suit me? Yeah, totally. You are really cute. And she is adorable. I think the old me would have been embarrassed to see something like that out loud, but now that's really how I feel. And if it makes Sachi smile, I'll say it over and over again. As long as you think so, I don't care what anyone else thinks. Good job! So pretty soon after, we arrive at the place where we're supposed to meet up with Akemi and Tomo, though it seems they beat us there. Akemi's looking cute. Hey guys, you are late! Sorry. Actually, we're about ten minutes early. We, we've been waiting here for so long. Akemi, being early isn't a bad thing. But don't get mad at them for being on time. Seriously. Who side are you on? We're here to meet them. So you may, so maybe they should get here a little early. Yeah, right. Early. You mean like an hour early? What? That, that's how early we were? Unfortunately, yes. But I wanted to meet Sachan so bad. I've been seeing her in my dreams. You can't blame me. F <laughs> you can't blame me for that. Oh, uh, Kimmy. And like I said, if you pressure the people around you into doing things, you're going to be left alone. Hey, Sachan, your outfit's really cute. Don't. Oh, tables have churned. Don't ignore me. Whatever. Should we get going then? Yeah, does anyone object to walking? Nope, it's only like a 20 minute walk from here or something. Kind of short distance to be taking the train for. Right, let's go. That's not enough room on the sidewalk for all of us to walk side by side. So Kami and Tomo walk in front, while Sachi and I follow behind. Oh, I forgot, Momoro Senpai? Sachi, look, Sachi looks up to me. Yeah. Um, can we hold hands? Yeah, sure. I hesitated because Tomo and Kami are here, but I guess that was more out of habit than anything. It's too late to hide my relationship with Sachi at this point. It's not like I can refuse her, but when she's staring at me with that beautiful, shining eye, anyway. Wow. Getting cuter by the ever, ever split in seconds. She's getting more cute. <sighs> and she's singing? Sachi happily wraps her arm around mine. I don't think I've seen her fawn over me this much before. Well, then again, she has been pretty open with her affection lately. By the way, the place we're going to is... Ah! You guys look so cute! Kami looking back at us seems almost upset as she says this. Sachi recoils from her outburst, suddenly embarrassed, and lowers her gaze, but she doesn't let go of my arm. The game is actually making me uncomfortable as well, but if Sachi's not letting go, I'm not about to force her to. Tomo, I want to do that too! <laughs> uh, hey, cut it out. It's hard to walk like this. <laughs> Akemi, spirited as always, seizes Tomo's arms as he turns his head to glare at me. <laughs> Don't look at me, I didn't do anything. <clears throat> Get off. 
Aren't double dates just fantastic? <laughs> it's a single date plus two. <laughs> That's cool, Tomo. Fine, fine. Just don't hang on me. Like I said, it's hard to walk like that. <laughs> you look like they're having fun. <laughs> Sachi chan, the only one having fun here is Akemi. But you can take her off my hands if my hands if you want to. But I can't let go of Momoro Senpai. Oh, the problems. The problems keep mounting. People, the mountains, the problems are getting bigger. You say that, but I think Tomo's the one who's actually trapped. Oh, shut up. You two aren't the only ones in pain here. In pain? You've got the beautiful Akimic channel wrapped around your arm. You should be more enthusiastic. Man, there's no point in arguing with you. Despite his protest, I can tell he's not entirely against latching. I can't be la ta uh, latching onto him like that. In fact, she seems to have him in the palm of her hand. Well, based on her energy levels and based on his low energy levels, yeah, you can sort of get swept up in the, in the cause here. Oh, that's looking a little bark. Oh, hey, this is the place. Oh, hey, this is the place, right? I'm not seeing much in the festival stuff, do you? We're finally here. The large plaza is dotted with various stalls. And there are a few people here, and they're doing some kind of performance or another. There are more people than here than I thought there would be, and I can hear instruments being played somewhere beyond the crowd. There must be a concert around here somewhere. I didn't realize how big this event was going to be. Kemi, what is this all for? I hope she has more of a plan than just wandering around aimlessly. We need to use our time more wisely than that. I only looked up where it was being held. I don't know where any more than you do. Oh, the plans of my cement. Jeez, Akemi, you didn't even find out why this is all here in the first place? We can find out while we're here, can we? Looks to me it's just one big traditional style festival. It seems like it'll be a lot of fun. Akemi had already let go of Tomo's arm, but Sachi doesn't look like she wants to detach herself from mine. Well, why don't we walk around and see what's there? Yeah! Don't yell so loud. You're not fun! <clears throat> After a while, something stops a Kimmy in her tracks. Look! They're selling crepes! Wow, they are. I want one! Sachan, do you want one too? You like sweet things, right? Crepes! Sachan! Crepes! I never had one before. I never had one before, but I do like sweet things. Yeah! See, Sachan wants one too! A Kimmy turns towards Tomo with a hungry smile. How womanly of her. Go get your crepes. There's a pretty big line. Go stand in line. Stand in line for us? No. <laughs> Tomo. What? You didn't even think about it. Well, I'd have to be the one to do it. I'm not the one who wants one. Don't worry. Here's some cash. Buy something I like, okay? You can't force me to. You know what I like, right? Somehow, yes, I do. Maybe I should buy something you won't like. Aw, oh, don't be that way. Sacha, what do you want? I'll pay for you. Huh? No, it's okay. I can pay for myself. It's fine, Sacha, it's fine. This is like your welcoming party, after all. But, but. Go for it, why not? Well, well th thank you for your generosity. So what do you want? Take a look at the menu here. Mm, just whatever's cheapest, please. It all looks good. The cheapest? Boring. I told you I don't mind such on Tomokun, get something nice for here, okay? Roger that. So I get the cheapest thing for a Kemi, and use the rest to get the most extravagant thing I can afford for Sachi-chan. Hey, wait a minute. It's still my money. Oh, come on. <laughs> Momoru. You want anything? Nah, I'm good, thanks. You guys bring your drinks while I'm doing this. I'm going to be thirsty by the time I get all this. I don't want to wait in line again. Fair enough. Okay, we'll go buy something to drink and meet you back here. Get me uh, some tea or something. Roger, Dodger. We watch Tomo as he gets in line for the crepe stand before heading off ourselves to find drinks. I'll drink to that. Oh, there's a vending machine over there. 
Yeah, there is. Is that alright? Yep. We get our drinks and find a bench in view of the crepe stand. Tomo is still not here yet. Hey, Sachan. Yes? Are you having fun? Yes, a lot of fun. You are? Yay, good. You seem like you've mostly gotten comfortable with him. Yes, I have. At first, I wasn't sure what what to do or how to act, but I've had a lot of fun just hanging out with you all. <laughs> you don't have to be so polite around us. you got to cut loose a little bit more. I'm trying to be more relaxed, but... Really? You should be more like me! Bursting with energy! I, I'm i not sure I could be like you, Akimi-senpai. Don't try to turn her into you. People, Normal people don't burst. Yeah, that could, that could end badly. Hey, I got your crepes. Before I know it, Tomo's standing in front of us with two crepes. Ah, thanks! Here, take your change too. This was for you, Sachi. Thought he was joking before, but he brought back... But what he brought back for Sachi could easily feed two people. Thank you very much. Be two people. Hmm. Hmm. Why would that be? Hmm. Don't mention it. Tomo hands Sachi her grape, but once it's in her hands, all she does is stare at it in awe. She turns toward Akimi and Tomo, stunning looking, very serious. Tomoyori senpai, Akimi senpai, thank you both for so much for today. I told you, there's no need to be so formal about it, silly. Yeah, especially since Akami has been going crazy and dragging us all over the place. It doesn't have to be a one-time thing, though, you know. Do you want to get out again sometime? Yes, thank you. By the way, you should probably eat your crepe. Yeah, yeah you're right. It looks so good. The two start eating their crepes. Akami stuffs her face to the point where her cheeks are puffing out while Sachi eats hers with teeny little nibbles. Those two could not be more different. How is it? Good? Yeah, delicious. Her smile is as sweet as the crepe she's eating, and I'm grateful to Tomo and Kemi for setting this all up. Hey, 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 don't eat so greedily. You're going to push all the fillings out the bottom. But if it's the for... <clears throat> and he'll talk with a mouthful. Oh, crap. It's... C? <laughs> she's, in, she's in distress. Sound the Kemi alarm. I came with last bite. Sutsu made the chocolate sauce start oozing out of the crust. I, I told you, Akemi. Oh, no. If I... Oh, no. If I took it... She goes down part of the crepe, but it only pushes more chocolate sauce out onto her hand, which of course begins to drip all over the place. At least she managed to avoid getting it on her clothes. Finally, she swallows. Oh, man. You don't know where I can wash my hands? Tomokun, help me out. All right, all right. Just keep those hands away from me. We'll be back soon. See you guys. Okay. Bye. Sachi and I watch them go to find... As they go somewhere to find... Clean up. There's the chocolate situation getting steadily worse. Those two sure are lively. I think they're half alive, actually. One's partially there. One's totally there. Works it out. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah. But I can't say probably does make life exciting, right? Yeah, things are really boring with her around. But you notice that is a really nice person, even if he says mean things sometimes. That's just how he is. I can't really got a hold on him. They're a good match for each other. No kidding. They're great, though, aren't they? They are. You know, I haven't told them... I haven't known them for long, but I can tell you guys will become close friends in no time. Hey, I've been hearing some rumors about what Sadokawa's been doing to you. You never told Mimi san or anyone else because you didn't want to cause trouble for them, right? Sachi doesn't reply, but she's not denying it, so I'm pretty sure I hit the nail on the head. Like I said this morning, I think even Mimi san will listen to you, to what you have to say. All of us around you, we're all your allies. So Sachi, if you, if you think you need to, I'll... I just never want to see you get hurt again. I've never actually helped from anyone. I never fought back against Sadokawa. It's like you just said... I don't want to trouble anyone if I can avoid it. I see. But it's not just that. I never stood up for myself because I didn't have the courage to do so. I didn't have the courage to do anything. If I was brave, I might have been able to fight back against Sadakawa-san. I might be able to tell her off. Well, when push comes to serve, I'll be there for you. You can't be worried about causing other people trouble in times like this. Both for your sake and the sake for those who care about you. And you're stronger than you realize, Sachi. 
I think it also sort of you sort of know Sadakawa is just not a girl to you can talk to her, but she's pretty smart on the on her feet. And she's pretty smart on her feet. So it's just Yeah. Maybe. Definitely. But this is a decision you, that you have to make. I understand. Then next time Santa calls on tries to do something, I'll tell her to stop. Good. And if things get bad, it's okay to ask people around you for help. Okay. It doesn't sound like her heart is in it. Sorry for bringing that up so suddenly. Yeah, I, I was thinking for a moment that I had skipped something there because it went from da 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 da. Woof. A little, little abrupt. It's probably not something we should be talking about right now. Today's supposed to be a day where we have fun together and forget our troubles. Hey, if you don't eat that your crepe, you're going to end up like a Kemi. Oh, right. With that, she starts eating the crepe in her hand once more. And she's not offering it to me. I hope we can help Sachi take our mind off Sadakawa. Looks good. Are you enjoying it? Yes. I don't really get to eat this sort of thing at all. It's probably the best thing I've ever tasted. I guess I should have asked Tomo to give me one, too. Oh, then... Do you want a bite? Well, yes indeed. Here. Sachi holds her kip up to my mouth. I'm all too conscious of the fact that Sachi's had her own mouth all over it. What? Reverse kiss? What's wrong with that? Maybe she's trying to pay me back for when I shared my lunch with her that one time. Mm-hmm. Sachi stares at me expectantly, her hand unmoving. Well, okay. I think buy the crepe before me. Is it good? Yeah. I have no idea what's in this thing, but it's incredibly sweet. Just like her. So sweet. Jeez, you two do something so sweet like that while we were gone. Startled, I jerked my head around to see that Kimmy and Tomo returned. They totally just saw that, didn't they? Clearly. Suddenly my face feels like it's on fire and I took over to look over at Sachi to see that her cheeks... I've also gone red, but she seems almost happy about it somehow. That's so cute. Tomo, I want us to do that too. And next time we'll see if Tomo follows through with her demands, which I'm pretty sure, no, he won't. So, very cute date. Double date at this point. Um, good time. With, pretty calming all, overall. So, uh, But at least get, to, get a little more backstory on Mayumi-san. See what she was up to and how to... Try to smooth things over with her family. Uh, her aunt, in this case. So, thank you for joining me. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a comment down below of what you liked about this. Um, if you have any additional visual novels you want me to do, to commentate on, to narrate, please drop them down below. Thanks for watching. Good night.